Um, starting from there, my name is Andrea Tilo. I'm totally happy to host the final panel because it's an impossible task. We had it yesterday already. First of all, after, after having a panel after Ole, who experienced him in, in the morning? This was su such an artistic expression, creative means everywhere. So it's... We are coming back a little to normality now. We try hard to make our best. Because I don't know how you feel. I don't ask you. It will take ages probably to, get all, to collect all the answers to make it participative. I feel a little like, you know, you're sitting in France. You have a five-course meal. It's after the dessert. And now it's the cheese. And you feel like, oh, no more. <laughs> so... I might guess this is like how you feel. So to make it a little different, you know, it's like a rice bag and you, you kind of shuffle it a little to fill up a little more space for oxygen. This we do with you now. Before I introduce the most lovely speakers, I wouldn't call them, I love, the, I love your idea of friendship, Dan. I, I take it from you. It's your copyright. I give you money afterwards. I don't call them friends, but what are we creating? There's a wording by Niklas Luhmann, and I think, just two sentences. A conference, what we are experiencing, it's we are having a structural koppelung, you say in Germany. We combine it on a structural level. What do we combine? Energy, people, friendship, knowledge, everything together. We will all transform in a, in a different way, everybody of us. Um, we will be transformed after this conference. And we want to know something about about your transformation before we all leave. We want to have your critical responses. We want to have your most remarkable ideas of the conference, your, your heart-touching moments, everything. I will collect this later when these most wonderful people will have spoken. Before, um, they are going to give us their very personal and critical remarks on these two days. Crit critical in a sense of what might be missing to create the future. What might still be missing after one and a half days to make change and ourselves to become change agents more than we have already been. Before we are going to do that, I all beg you, please, pardon, to stand up for a second. Did we have this already? I don't think so, no. I love, Dan, again, I love this idea to talk together. I think now we're not going to do something together. We're doing, doing it collectively. This is the rice, you know? We are shuffling a little, like to fill up the head. Yeah, do it like It's the last session. The people from Asia, it's already midnight for them. So get away. Come on. It's not esoteric. It's just sports. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not the computer. <laughs> so for all the sponsors, this is very important. <laughs> so second of all, please. So take your shoulders back. Just 30 okay. more seconds. Oh, you we won't be dead after. Oh. So, oh, no. You may make a sound. Make a sound. Is it cool? Yeah. No, I'm not cool. Okay? You're almost yes. there. <laughs> But I'm not cool. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> so, take care. This is the last movement for now. Turn to your side, look at your neighbor. You have to look at the other side. Huh? Nice <laughs> nice. 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 No. Tell them there are two free seats. Two seats. Sorry, one in the second row and two seats in the front for anybody who wants to sit down. Now take it serious for a second. Um, let me share for a second my thoughts with you, what we have seen in this afternoon. We've seen artistic presentations, and all the artists have questioned the people they want to get involved with. They were asking for their imagination and for their dreams. And this maybe is one of the core issues where this art seems to be so successful in the means of transition. Successful. And yeah, successful is a strange word for it. Successful. But when we want to achieve something, are we allowed to ask about success and quality and all this kind of stuff? So maybe we will tackle some of these questions in the next hour. So I'm a little out of breath. I do my so very good that he's going to talk now. So I need more training, I know. Yeah. I'm turning 50 soon. So um, Marco. He's an amazing thinker and a speaker. And one of the words I like most of his sayings is like, a city 
where you can walk through. This is a place which is almost good for everything. And I think this is something we experienced in this afternoon. He comes from Jakarta. He comes from the architectural background, and he's a great thinker in um, urbanism. So we will hear from them. Then this is Patricia Kistenmarsha. She's an art artist. I don't tell you which artist, because she's a surprising artist. <laughs> she's part of the founders and creators of a very impulsive and very important network in Latin America. She's a facilitator. She speaks six languages, including Mandarin. So anybody who's, <laughs> who wants to learn something from the conference should address her for Mandarin. So this is Honor... So so now I must look it up. It's, a, it's an incredible name. Honor Susan Kömertu Nobrega. Yeah? So I think she's, she's living diversity. She has, I think, at least two cultures in her body. She has a, a husband with, I think, another three ones. So, and this is not very surprising that racial issues and precarious labor are some of various subjects she's dealing with. She's currently teaching at Goldsmith College in London. So very, she's a great thinker, too. They are all very critical. You're going to hear about it. And this is Dr. Markus Graf. And also, this is very important, the doctor, because he's very, no, no, he's very, he's very good in theoretical things thinking and combining it with practical ideas. So we'll hear from them, from him too. He's living in Istanbul for a long time. He wanted to stay for some days, but this is a, about transition. <laughs> Come around the corner. Ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I want to get you all. <laughs> like in Lagos, I think the people there, they are standing in front of two million people when they address their religious sessions. And he stayed there for, for years now, and he's responsible for a lot of things at the Biennale in Istanbul and the European uh, capital culture there. Culture capital there. So, we take it from here. I think we start with you, Marco. And please, can you address to us for two more minutes, two and a half minutes, perhaps a very short glimpse on... Very short, yeah. We want to get you into the discussion. Um, what was key for you in the conference, and what did you miss? I think what I'm missing, and I would like to have more, are really one word or two, which is utopian discourse. I think we are missing a lot. I think we need utopia not in the sense of, you know, a programmatic, obsessive developmentalism, but utopia as an optimist expression, utopia as an optimistic synthesis. Uh, having said though, that, though, but I, 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 I do recognize there are some elements of utopia being said, but I, I think they are not really brought uh, uh, to the scale that I would expect. For example, there is a lot of talks about communities. I think the way we hear, heard communities during these two days are really pointing to something utopian, in a good way and in a bad way. I think, I think we really need to think more about communities, but I think it is not easy. And one reason why it is not easy is because communities is really a challenge to our ideas of nation state. And, and the fact that we are talking about public space and I think someone yesterday talked about the transformation of common space into public spaces exactly because nation state is taking over uh, community works and common space. But the, sec the second thing I want to say is the, the element of, of, of utopia is very optimistic thinking about role of art to the degree that I become very suspicious are uh, really arts that wonderful, that useful, where are any critical discourse about the problems that art itself is facing. So I would expect maybe for the next conference uh, is, <laughs> is, is not only utopia about the world that we want to go to, an optimistic synthesis, but also utopia about art itself. And the third thing, and this is the last thing, I, I'm very disappointed to the fact that Architecture and urbanism was not very much talked about. I understood there are talked about that, of course, but again, if you talk about public space, you talk also about architecture. But the point is, architecture and urbanism, or cities, consume 40% of materials from the earth and consume 30% of energy. And we think, when we think about some utopia of the future, we have to think about urban utopia. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much. Yes. If you 
allow me, I want to take the energy and keep it here for, for some more minutes and then we come back to you uh, for your reactions on um, how you want to interfere with, with what was already said. Marco, um, Marcos, is, that, is the question of utopia missing already also a subject of your concern? Um, hello. I was the observer of the section Public Art, and I think um, I missed often the utopian impact and uh, the utopian context in the art projects or in the way we talked about art or tried to instrumentalize art, but I didn't see or I didn't miss um, uh, utopian potential in the conference in general, because what we were talking about is an utopia. Because we talk about that a minority within the art system, which is a minority of artists, because sometimes it seemed like, you know, public art, for instance, every artist is dealing nowadays with public art, which it isn't. It's a small minority of artists which deal with. Increasingly, it gains importance when we look at biennials and contemporary exhibitions and collections even. But when we look at the numbers of artists, when we look at the numbers of classes at, um, at uh, academies, for instance, then we see actually that we talk about a minority. But still we suppose and we expect this minority to change society, which is difficult. So um, I would like to just a few, because I thought this was our um, job. Um, to um, to talk a bit a bit about at least you know um, what happened in the s uh, seven uh, sections of public space within the last two days. So um, I think that first of all we sometimes we talk about art in public space or public art as if it would be something new, but actually uh, a lot of speakers pointed out that it has uh, traditional roots in uh, the art or the notion of art of the 18th century, which often was. Uh, observed in a way that's why pretty critically because it res uh, refers to a pretty uh, pretty romantic notion of art and um, a western discussion of art uh, in which we uh, put on the one hand art for its own sake and on the other hand art um, uh, for changing society and being part of the revolutions which later on continued in the modern avant-garde then uh, continued in the anti-museum movements of the 60s uh, the institutional critique the relational aesthetics and uh, nowadays uh, in the terms of the uh, biennialization of, of the globalized art world so and it came out actually that it's a, a pretty complex topic, which we talk about a lot, but actually, um, I mean, um, I uh, visited five meetings with 16 speakers and seven moderators discussing very, various conceptual, formal, aesthetic, cultural, cultural, managerial, cultural, political strategies of formulating, building and running art, art projects and art institutions that work in public space with public art. Can you repeat it? Yeah. Still, I do not know the answers, of course. But I realized that, and this is actually something that many moderators, artists, and colleagues of mine pointed out, that we are in trouble. And as uh, Draxler pointed out yesterday, this is something good. Because, for instance, um, when Dirk was talking about um, artists as agents or angels of change for social uh, transformation processes within society, which actually refers to art as part of society, then Draxler said, you know, the artist, and many artists said, we don't want to be angels, we don't want to be superheroes, we, want to be, we don't want to be an 007 of art, we want to be troublemakers. And art itself is a problem. And in the end, maybe just what came out, I can point it later on again, um, actually, there were a lot of discussions about what is, um, what is uh, public art and public sphere. How do we call it? Shall we call it public space or shall we call it public sphere, civic space, civil space? A, a few minutes before, I, I learned out of home space. And um, uh, yesterday, there was a term common space. So... There is a lot of need for discussion, and I think um, it will open up uh, a lot of more dis uh, possibilities for further, co further um, discussions. And I think it should be some kind of in-between space, a space which is not formulated now because it can't be formulated. Because the, way, the moment you start to formalize and depict it, somehow you put it onto certain 
frames and roles. Marcus, thank you very much until here. When you are uh, putting the word troublemakers into frame, it comes to my head. The last session, only a third or a fourth has been sitting here. Some, many of on the panel have said, like, maybe the decision-making process in juries, at least in Germany, is critical to the question, should troublemaker art be funded and will it be supported? Or are we, through the democratization process in jury finding, maybe mediocrizing, how will you say that? Mediocrizing? You know everything, Ole, I know. Uh, <laughs> can you replace me? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, yeah, and maybe we'll touch this subject, subject later again. Um, Honor, um, you have an own agenda um, because you had a different, yeah, not an own agenda, you had your different field. Can you tell us about your personal notions on how you are reflecting uh, your strength? Mm -hmm. um, I, just to, oh, it's not Is it on? Yes. yes. Hello, you can hear me? Okay, cool. Um, But you were just saying, uh, Andrea, um, that should be troublemakers funded. I think one of my observations um, is that within a liberal discourse, everything you, ca you can incorporate everything. You know, so in that sense, I think the question has been answered over the last two days. Yes, it is possible. No problem. I think that is. A statement I would make and that we, we could leave it to uh, discuss. We we'll leave it to the public. Okay. So um, one of the key themes of this gathering has been for me the statement that the arts have an impact on social transformations or are even sort of a driving motor of enabling or sparkling social transformation. And this statement, I thought, has been formulated as if it were an imperative saying, do social transformation, exclamation mark. This might be or not be one of the fashionable imperatives emerging out of a, a, a situation where people in different geographies have experienced in the last years a social crisis, a, a protest, precarity um, in, in different um, yeah, geographical uh, uh, locations. So it can be a remote narrative, it can be a close narrative, it can be an image that stays with you or disappears the next moment. So, um, and of course, we also have to think about the channels through which these narratives are mediated. Channels not only in terms of uh, cables, but also uh, through ourselves as speaking with the mouth of something or speaking with our mouth that is already kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, formu formulating itself in a particular discourse. So what came out for me was that people are, um, it's a heterogeneous group, which can be, um, can exist, coexist in, 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 a, in a liberal framework quite well, I think. And... Um, With, with the very, very different uh, uh, positionalities in terms of what one understands as the political, the social, the economic, and so on. And the personal as well, obviously. So, um, to come back to the notion of the imperative of uh, do social transformation, I think that this, this imperative actually undoes uh, What, what, it, what it states, what should be done. Um, I think that relates also to what you said, Marco, of utopia, um, which is also, I think we have to think of how we understand utopia, because utopia is such to state that uh, people have thought about it in very, very various ways, you know. And I think also that we couldn't find a shared definition in this space of what this utopia might be. So I think um, undoing uh, uh, the exploration of possibilities um, and of how those struggles that I have mentioned just before, I mean, we had quite a lot of times the, the metaphor of Tahrir Square emerging, the Middle East. This was something that I was ob observing. And, um, uh, you know, the struggles for re redistribution, for recognition, for a voice becoming incorporated into a managerial machine, such as that I am the diversity token, perhaps, as you have introduced me, you know, um, 
or being captured in a neo-colonial relationship of patronage, which um, is something that came up this morning when we were talking about this Kinshasa uh, um, um, film um, that for me, actually, you know, I, fo I found it um, quite irritating to hear that the conductor would live for Beethoven. I mean, I, I said already, for me, that is quite very much like, um, okay, what is, what is a good life? Who, you know, it's the civilizing mission. We bring you a good life. You live for Beethoven. I found that very problematic. So I think the question um, that uh, one uh, could ask oneself is how to be a bit more humble and to actually turn the imperative the other way around from arts for social transformation into how the social, the political, the economic, and the arts field itself impact on artistic practices and why you, you, me, we all in different ways are who we are and possibly think about how to transform ourselves in the radius of crisis, contradictions, and power. Do you want me to go on or shall I stop here? <laughs> I can go on forever. So. Not forever. <laughs> One and a half. <laughs> we believe you. I think, um, uh, yeah, this leads me also to, to another point, which is about the differences and similarities between different artistic fields. My observation is that particularly the visual arts and some of its representatives that I've met uh, here, um, and... and I marry here some uh, sort of historical materialistic uh, view with psychology uh, just for this moment. Please apologize to bring this, uh, that I bring this together. But I think that there is what I would call um, uh, one suffers of the Stockholm Syndrome. Is everybody familiar with the uh, Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah. By which uh, uh, those who are taken hostage by uh, what uh, Salat yesterday called liquid capitalism uh, or become to love the one who keeps them hostage. Maybe I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. We, I think we are going to address this further later too. Humbleness and awe. I think... This is probably not what you are and what you are going to do. Maybe it's not imaginable without feeling it. I don't know. Patricia. Well, uh, thank you. Um, I want to thank you for being here because this is a wonderful team. So it's a, a, a privilege for me to share this space with you. So I thank you for the invitation and for your participation. And uh, I've been an observer to the Art for Social Transformation Forum. And I have to admit, I know nothing about Art for Social Transformation. So uh, let's try and feel something about uh, transformation. You know that art or artists are uh, problem makers, right? It was just said. So let's uh, try to feel what is it about uh, art for social transformation rather than talking about it. So I would uh, kindly request you to leave everything you have in your hands and stand up. I would kindly request you to stay in silence and uh, uh, try to concentrate on uh, this uh, is a humble experience of what it may be uh, social transformation, art of a social transformation. So uh, could you please face the person you have behind you? No, 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 excuse me. Um, in, in couples, right? You, you, you face him. Uh, we, we need couples, right? We need couples. You, you look at him. If, he, if not, if you have no, no one behind you, you look. We need couples. You need a couple, Ali. Look for a couple. Maybe, okay, him. So you, do you all have a couple standing or sitting? Do you all have a couple? Okay, you can relax your hands. You don't need to, to use your hands. You just can relax your hands. And in complete silence, please 
um, have a look at the other person's face. The person you have in front of you, just have a look at its face, its features, the color of the skin, the shape of the nose, the hair, the color of the eyes, the mouth, but in silence, please, just looking at the, the face of the other people, the other person you have in front of you. Now you have recognized the other person's face. We are going to do the, the following thing. You see that you have an obstacle between you and the other person, right? So this side of the obstacle, that is the first row, the third row, the fifth row, this side of the obstacle is the world of possibilities. The other side of the obstacle is the world of lack of possibilities. So, each couple, each group, the world of possibilities or the world of lack of possibilities are going to share with the other part of the world in a way that you defined what you can share, what you wish to share, what you think you are able to share. So you take your time, but f thinking about this world of possibility, meeting the world of lack of possibility represented by this person whose face you have gone through, you please connect and interact with, uh, between yourselves. Please, go ahead. Shall we leave them? How long shall we leave them? As long as it goes on. As you prefer. As you prefer. Uh, we didn't. They always did it. We didn't understand what we should do now. We yeah. really didn't. We get too nervous here on stage, you know. We didn't understand. Yeah. The, the lack in yourself. The, the world of possibilities and the world of lack of possibilities to exchange. To exchange. To, 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 I am sorry, you didn't understand. They all understood it. Did, did they? Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. It's kind of exchange, uh, possi possibility, possibility of exchange. Yes. Possibility. My lack, and you are providing me with a possibility mm. to fill up my lack. Mm. Mm. But there's a kindness in your face, what? which I take to my heart. <laughs> And yeah. you know one thing I immediately think about is your energetic uh, personality mm -hmm. and I immediately think about the space in Indonesia for you. <laughs> what would it be? I mean, I think Europe is so crowded. Tight, tight. It's yeah. crowded, yeah. And I think my Maybe country I should come. Is, yeah, Maybe I should come. I should come <laughs> and you know, yesterday it was so funny. I was sitting in, a, in one of these sessions that people were wanting to know each other who don't know each other. Off. Could be. I want to pull my shoes but, off. Off. But, and 
Yes, Were we exactly comfortable that. with this or not? Yes, because I think we missed the decision made. We don't walk with some people. Some people didn't stand up. Yeah, that's true. Walking through the city is almost good for everything. You know, it's a city. You can walk through it like It's really no violence when you walk. A lot of accents, and that was there. It's been in time at this place. And it's very moving. And we have beautiful cities where you can't do this anymore. You can't cross the street and you don't have to do it. But we don't know our neighbor anymore. And this is the problem of individualization. Maybe in Jakarta it's different. I've never been there. It's the same. We, do you need more time? <laughs> do you need more time? No. Then take it. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Yes, please. So now, maybe now we can have a feeling of what is it about social transformation. And we may like it, we may dislike it, we may find it queer. All sort of possibilities are here in this group. And we are just a, a tiny spot in our world. So this is multiplicated over and over and over in the rest of the world. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it leads me to two final questions because I want to deliver everything to you to come back to us. First question is to... Uh, please pick one of the questions you prefer, all four of you. First question is, if we want to talk about uh, transformation through the arts, do we have to take em the emotional side more into consideration in general? Because if I look back what has happened in the afternoon with all the examples we have seen, I could see the smile on the face of the people who have been transformed through the transformation of space from public into common. So it was not imaginable without the emo emotional side. This is one question I want to address to you. The second question, this is a question that was arising from this wonderful moment Patricia was creating, was like, we are an individualizing society. In Germany, we don't know the name of our neighbors, and maybe we won't know it for the next 30 years. An artist, as long as I understand it, is an individual so much fighting for his individualism for all his life, maybe never have been understood in his school and so, from his parents, whatever. And then trying to create collective change, sometimes for me this sounds like a contradiction. Is it a contradiction? And how can we dissolve the contradiction. So, open space for us, and then we want to hear everything from you. Yeah. Who wants to jump in? Um, yeah, maybe about... Um, I shoot for the emotion. Um, I think, I mean, um, within all the various sections that we had um, during the last two days, it was somehow also we were talking about um, although we said, you know, the public space, for instance, or the public sphere is dissolving, it's fragmental, it's, it's destroyed, it's, um, it's gone and whatever. Whatever we were talking about, we were talking about actually an alternative way for producing knowledge, for instance, for understanding the world, for criticizing the world, for reviewing the world. And in this, in this way, especially with arts um, potential for um, creating utopia and for going beyond knowledge beyond the known, um, I think that 
um, emotion in that way plays a pretty important role because when we talk about the production and the mediation especially of knowledge, we know that without emotion, without feeling, you cannot transfer knowledge. It's very simple. The more you like it, the more you learn about it. It's not learning, it's then experiencing. And then it became something else like schoolish knowledge. So that's why I think emotion, um, although it's often attached to the very um, radical uh, expressionist uh, way of abstract expressionism and egoistic individualistic subjects in Western art world, I think still, although we were talking about a lot about art and knowledge and art and social sciences, I think that in that way, actually, emotion as a carrier, as a form, as a package, is still important. And all the new neuroscience of pedagogy and learning, and so they take emotions totally into consideration. Uh, Patricia, do you want to add something? Yes, I would say that uh, if we do not ha have art of quality and beauty, it's very hard to feel emotions. So I, I think that that is a result of the quality and beauty of the art. But don't we resent for the last, and I, I try to be self-critical at that point, don't, don't we, or a lot of us, or a lot of in us, <laughs> resent to the force or the wish to come to quality criteria beyond this personal linkage with something? You say, what do you say? Art of quality and beauty, which might it be for you, might not be for the next one. So how can we overcome this paradox um, within the discussion about funding structures and sustainability and process quality leads to performance quality and so on. So how do we get any further from this emotion? <laughs> I think that uh, we have to accept and... Um, and rejoice with a diversity. So it's not going to be the same for everybody, and that is something important. We have to deal with that. So uh, if, uh, anyway, I, I think that if there's really beauty and quality in any artistic expression, it's very difficult that people are not moved. Uh, but I think that uh, it's not a question of um, just feeling things just because it's, a, it's a, a combination of beauty and quality that arises uh, emotions. For me, it's, it's that way. And uh, diversity, you may not like it. Anybody of you wants to jump in into what we are talking about now? Either directly or adding something, please. And please be as open and as personal as possible. Um, I think it would be wonderful if a little bit more attention could be given to the actual terms that we use. Otherwise, we end up with four streams passing each other and we end up with phrases like, wouldn't it be, or we, we can accept it all because it's diversity and then we use the biosphere or the ecosystems to substantiate that and say, well, Diversity is good, but it would be so great if we could just the term emotion and experience. We spend days talking about things and actually never come to, you know, for me, emotion is something really experience doesn't have to be emotion. And maybe if we talk about experiential knowing, we don't have to conflate it with emotion. What do we mean? So I think if we are trying to talk in detail about how we move toward anything, we really need to start coming to understand carefully, make some careful space for some clarity, discussions about clarifying what we're talking about. Lee, can you please, no, can, can I take you serious with what you are saying? And can you please add, in this specific way you're talking about this, the term experience, what do you call it, experiential knowledge. And can you tell us a little more about how you specifically understand that and you mean it? Shelley. Short, short. Um, well, first of all, I don't separate experiential knowing from experience. So for me, experiential knowing doesn't have to do with emotion, but it does have to do with lived 
understanding. And lived understandings happen in our imaginations. I've just spent five years running processes with people in different parts of the world about how thinking happens also inside us. It has to do with imagination. So I don't want to give you my whole theory, but it would be great if we could talk about things like that carefully. Then we might understand if experience, experiential knowing, really has something to do with coming to new understandings or new picture ways of looking for ways forward, which Marco may be called utopias, meaning something quite different to the person from Goldsmiths. I can't say your name. I didn't hear it properly. But Honor. It's it. Honor. Honor. So just... Could we ever have a conference or a space, let's call it a space, a proper exchange where we try and understand what each other are really talking about and then go on to look at strategies and methods and differences of opinion? But we start from a very difficult point. We call it the arts in total. And uh, already there, the, the problem begins. Um, maybe, and I really invite you for now... We don't have so much time either to be critical on we, what we've been saying, uh, saying, adding things, whatever, bringing your perspectives in, please. And I try to go around. Yes, please. Yes, please, for the translation. Yes, uh, two comments on Onur and Marco. First of all, Onur said that no problem. But I, as an artist, I do have problems. I do have many problems. And... I'm trying to be brief and jump to Marco from here. Um, it's about privileges, and some artists are more lucky, and some artists are less lucky. Or let's forget artists, talking about people. So I'm lucky to be here, but, you know, it was quite harder for me, from uh, many of us, to be here. And in this relation, sometimes art itself can become an utopia as well. So even participating to a conference like this could become an utopia. So there is an utopia. And you shouldn't look utopia outside. So sometimes it's, it's here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for being here. <laughs> um, yes, I think first you, I think, and then... Five rows behind. Now we're here in the fifth row. Thank you. Um, my name is Fiona Whelan. I'm an artist from Dublin. Um, I suppose it's probably something I've been stewing over a little bit for the last few hours, but I think we're, we're living in a time of, you know, um, greed and corruption and total crisis. Um, where a war could be imminent based on history in terms of what we're at economically in Europe. Um, I don't think this is an accident. I think it's self-serving and it is man-made. And I suppose I just feel a little caution in terms of how we talk about social transformation. I don't think it's in everybody's interest for, to, to bring about social transformation. So I think for those of us who feel it and who want it... Um, it's, it's a fight and it's something we have to take very seriously. And maybe as an artist, I'm feeling the weight of the, the public art plenary where we, we saw some city-funded projects. And I, I just wonder, maybe I'm sorry, I'm getting to a question. I just wonder for artists how you can begin to be an artist and not be co-opted <laughs> by the state or by the nation or by the city um, and getting caught, I suppose, in a political, someone else's political agenda. You see, we see regularly people upset at their, their situation and then an artist is brought in to almost mop up the problem and funding is often used in this way and I suppose it's, it's just something that maybe I feel I'll just throw out there. It, maybe, maybe the smiling faces is, is just a little, I feel a little uncomfortable with smiling faces because they are quite temporary and they're not always the reality of what, of what is actually going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Hi. Uh, 
first of all, I think, uh, before saying what was lacking, I think it's a very great moment, no moment, but event that we've been uh, lucky or not lucky, we just came here and I think it's great that, that this happened. Uh, as I was saying yesterday, I felt finally at home because of all these things that come together. But I believe, I'm, I'm an artist from Ecuador and I live in Italy. And the thing that I find that's missing is some decolonization of terms. Um, like development, like transformation, like tragedy, like agony, like things that um, perhaps in certain societies that have reached a certain level of what um, is intended by development, Tra there's place for tragedy and then arts uh, start to get into crisis and things like that. But when I feel, when I think about, for example, my country where nothing has been made yet, or very little, there's so much space to do things, to transform things, to change things, to be positive about things, to um, create spaces, to uh, collaborate between people, to, uh, I don't know, enact solidarity or collaboration or cooperation, a lot of things. To uh, create, uh, I don't know, funds for artists, you know, nothing of that has been yet made. And there's a lot of uh, hope and a lot of energy and a lot of young people and a lot of, you know, universes to be made or careers to be settled. You know, there's, uh, so decolonialize a bit. This also this uh, relationship between funders and funded, between north and south, between development and underdevelopment, between first and third world. You know, I think I've been missing that because... Um, it's not only the North that's funding social transformation and South who's coming up with bright ideas. It could be the other way around as well. Maybe not in money, but maybe in enthusiasm. I don't know. Decolonialize is something that has not been happening much. Thank you very much. Arising the question in my head, if we are still talking so much and, and, and struggling so much with the terms, what kind of sign is this a sign for? I'm, this is something I'm really asking myself. I think, no, first of all, th sorry, the, uh, so in the third row, yeah, with the red jacket, please. So we are still and the question if a, a foundation should, fake tra should found troublemaker, I would add, should a troublemaker uh, seek funding? And because he can, get in, he can get in big trouble once being dependent from funding. And then there is no fun more to make trouble because it's dependent from the funding. So the, the adding to this also, it's not always a, a, a desirable to, to enter a funder funded relationship, yeah? especially if it's uh, uh, overloaded with, uh, with, uh, with uh, val valorization discussions or with uh, ideological discussions. And of course, it's necessary to have time to make art. And it's, it's nasty. It's nasty if you decide, if you cannot live from this. It's really nasty because it limits your time. It limits your time to, but sometimes it's the better way, yeah? It's, it's a, if you keep the space to make trouble and have to, uh, to look for other things than, to, than for funding to survive. Thank you, Mark. I, th I think um, in, in addition to this, I think uh, the moment the troublemaker gets funded, he's not making trouble anymore. Yeah, but this... Can we... Can you please jump in? Please jump in. And, yes, we would like to arise some contradictions. Yes, please, Marco. Well... Yes, I think artists should be funded exactly because they are troublemakers. Yeah, but we were talking so much about the decision-making processes, and in this afternoon this yeah, was a major that, subject, that's, that's the I question did. how so it works. The, the funding agencies should understand that the prime role of artists are to, to make troubles. Do not expect solutions. Do not expect answers from artists. But funny enough, and I, I don't want to criticize it, but funny enough, the examples which we have seen in this room in the afternoon were not examples, at least the one, yeah, with the, with the train uh, passing by. But the other ones weren't troublemaker no, uh, uh, examples. So anybody of you maybe um, jumping in before we go further? Okay. Um, I think... Oh, I'm <laughs> 
First, is that okay for you? I think he was waiting longer. Oh, we have many more to come. First you, then you, and then we go to the back. Please, David. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think there was a great opportunity that was missed last night. Um, and it Which was one? Something called revolution. Um, <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate that um, I'm permitted to work with students. I'm very fortunate that I'm allowed to travel to many parts of the world and work with other communities and other artists. I'm very fortunate to be here. And I was very fortunate to meet some other artists who were working on a fabulous exhibition. The revolution that I'm seeing, the revolution that I think needs to be celebrated, is the quiet revolution. The fact that so many people are actually living different lifestyles, growing their own food, choosing different economies, being creative. This is nothing to do with the revolution and the riots on the street that the media wants to see. This is a real revolution. This is a creative revolution. This is art. Thank you very much. Um, yes, please. Um, sorry. Um, I think the uh, discussion about funding was an example for the antagonism between uh, commodity, art as a commodity and the self-determination of the artist. And this is a problem, I think, which stands in the room like an elephant, which is not properly talked about. That's all was, uh, what I wanted to add. Yes, I think a lot of us are with you in this problem. And maybe, and maybe I can b give the question back to you, because one of my questions we are having here at the panel is the question, where is the red thin line going further now for all of us in this room in the future? What are the questions we have to address to ourselves and our neighbors and our alliances? to get further to that. Heike, I think it, no, it was it, no, it was first there on the right side and then Heike, please. <laughs> Victory. Um, <laughs> you know, I will add responsibility. I think uh, only troublemakers, we cannot talk anymore about this because uh, what is this? A deflation of the artist for the public? And public will have something to, will have the time to say, no, thank you, or I don't want, or I want something else. So I think not only artists, but even like a normal person, we have to be responsible. I think it's the time of responsibility. It's too much noise. So we are not in at the beginning of the century when Dada felt the feel to make noise. It's uh, too much noise, so maybe we try to make a little bit sense. <laughs> maybe, if, maybe if it's quiet, it might be not even a contradiction. I don't know. Um, uh, Heike, I think there was anybody no, besides you. No, Heike, please. I think what, what the conference has somehow confirmed... Um, is that it was a problem and maybe even a mistake from the outset to separate the art for social transformation from the stream that is searching for cultures of sustainability. Thank you, Heike. Anybody reflecting on that or anybody with any further questions to us addressing the subjects that are circling in the room now? Yeah, I think you were there. Please. Yes, uh, I, I'm just kind of scared now. Um, what did you say? I'm afraid. I'm scared. Um, because um, I think the whole exercise would have failed for me if we all leave this place agreeing on the way, agreeing on the right thing, agreeing on this is how it should be. Then... There's, there will be a bit of failure in my heart. Um, I think part of the problem here is that we've not been brave enough to pick all the artists. For instance, we can start from this room, put them in a cage, and send them somewhere, you know, because the idea of creating, if not um, watched, can, turn, can make one start to think like I am the savior of the world. 
um, I've come with the solution to the problems of the world. Um, I've come to transform. And this is the way we should go. Um, will be For me, the experience would be coming from a background where, for instance, in my uh, culture, art is already playing all this role from the days of my ancestors. Art preserves the environment, does a lot of things, intervenes. Um, when you are a masquerade, you're in your costume, you, can, you could go to a king and tell the king whatever you felt was wrong with the king. But you couldn't do that as an ordinary member of that community. But when you are in your masquerade, when you are performing, you had the right to say anything to the, to the king. And so art already has been doing a lot of this. Now, coming to this contem- to, to where we are now, if, for instance, art can be created for the sake of creation of art, fine. Some arts would not get patronage in Nigeria where I come from by the public. They won't even look in that direction because it does not answer certain questions. But for some specific people, such arts would, you know, attract followership, would attract attention, and so on and so forth. So I think this diversity uh, should be kept there. I think the the feel, the experience of seeing where everybody is coming I mean, this is the United Nations, for goodness sake. So we can, you know, feel what and where everybody is coming from and allow, if it's good for us, the such positions to influence maybe our thinking, and if not, to just know that in some space, somewhere, people treat issues like this. But where I come from, this how we treat it. I don't know if um, we get the connection. I go um, here, I've not seen a market where I can, I've said this several times, I've not seen a market where I can interact and say, how much is that cup? And say, it's um, five euros. I say, no, no, I want to pay two euros. And we had that, inter- I go to a supermarket, it is fixed, the price is fixed. I buy it, I go to a machine, slot so, so my card, and you know, it's another way of life. It's an alternative and it's beautiful and we should, you know. So I'll be, I'll be scared if we leave this place cloned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dan, to you, please, and then there. Are you, we are, of course, running out, totally un, running out of time. It's now oh, pff, pff, more and more and more. Can we leave it to the informal tables outside and to the wine and everything we are going to serve by this great foundation now? Maybe, but can we... Is that okay for you? Because otherwise I think they get upset, which would not be a good idea for the next conference, because I'm sure you want to have another one. So, um, last... Last. Yeah, can I just say that um, I think the great thing about this gathering is that you meet people and you have an opportunity to meet people from different cultures and from different practices. I think, the, I think we need to be very careful when we think about artistic production as by individuals. When you mentioned that there seemed to be a contradiction between the artist as an individual and then collective processes of transformation... In my images, but I think other cultures here, a lot of the artistic production is collective. And, it hap- and, and that collective process is the learning of democracy. And I think for most people in their, wor- in their lives, in their worlds, whether it be an imagined community or a chosen community or a community of affinity, because you've moved for whatever reason, the learning of democracy is part of the crisis of transformation. Because you don't learn that in school. You learn conflict in school. You learn fear. And you're graded depending on how you survive fear. But I think most people, and, and, I, and I, I think this is important in terms of architecture, we're in architecture the whole time. You know, whether it's the school, whether it's the street... Whether it's a symposium, this is an architecture here. And I think it would be good for the foundation and for every social movement to look at the architecture of its meetings, of its conversations, you know, of its time, how it uses time. So we we have, with 10,000 people, with 150,000 people in Brazil, we've worked with a circular architecture, which is indigenous, which is ancestral, which is pre-industrial. But we've worked with architectures which are circular, which enable the avoidance of conflict, the building of consensus, the construction of 
diversity. It works really effectively. But the fears that people have, particularly leaders, to risk new architectures need to also be addressed in terms of how we have an intimate voice and a public voice. So I think, I think these are questions that perhaps in future conferences when we think about art and artists, it would be worth thinking about the aesthetics of the symposium and the architecture of the symposium. And the last thing I want to say, human beings um, are artistic from birth. They learn to walk by dancing. They learn to speak by singing. They create visually all the time. And I don't think it's helpful for us to think about the artists as the troublemaker. I think human beings need to be creative to make sense of the world and to make justice. And I just just want to say that in many parts of the world, we're not dealing any longer with the crisis of funding. We're dealing with the transformation of resources into economies of solidarity or exchange. And that's a different way of seeing the same questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. It is like, what can I say? It is something like a final word with three dots. So I know you want to say something, but really... Ten seconds. <laughs> Very. Thank you very much at this final. A big thank. And I want to give the word to um, Barbara, Barbara Unmüssig and Dirk Schelier from the Schleswig-Holstein Foundation. Yeah, a big thanks to all of you, to the great people behind who have organized these conferences and to make it possible that we could share so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really time now to say not only goodbye, but thank you. Um, I hope the architecture enabled diversity, dialogue in diversity. I hope so very much. I think it's good to know uh, from a final remark I would like to make why we get together here. We get together because we know social transformation is taking place every minute, every hour. And what we want to do about this is that social transformation is going to take place in freedom, in democracy, in equity, and in a just manner. This brought us together. I think everybody should be reminded on that, that I do not have to talk about social transformation. I have not to interpret it once more, because I have my mind quite right in that way. You know, We are fighting for fairness, for fairness uh, amongst everybody and a fair share of everybody. And the second thing brought us together is that we really are confronted with a destruction of the planet. We are not living in the planet boundaries. And what I would like to say, artists can contribute, but they are not the only one who are going to contribute. Be humble. I think that's great that somebody has mentioned it several times here. We, the foundation, we are supporting a lot of experiments taking place. We are supporting pioneers and visionaries everywhere. We try to empower people to overcome inequalities, to stop the destruction. And what I learned here is that we are all together in this desperately needed search for change. And we are in a search process, and we do not know the solutions. And what I found interesting here is that many, many people are joining us in that process of search. And this is what I like very much, and this is why I'm so grateful that we were able to offer a little space. I do not think about another conference. I have to digest what I learned here. Uh, and this is something we will, we will consider, and I hope together with all the partners we got in this experiment here. Uh, and I really hope to share something what I would like to say. say let us not, this is something else I would like to bring, bring across, um, denounce each other in our search process. I really would like to see a world who is able to stop always to judge what other people are doing. Let us work in mutual appreciation. This is what I'm looking for, mutual appreciation, and not denounce what other people are trying to find to get 
over the depletion and the destruction in this world. Once again, I will pass on to Dirk. A great thank you to everybody who contributed. It's a common and mutual experiment. It was great having so many different people here. I love it to be part of that. And I wish you all a very, very good trip home. Take with you what you like. I hope the space was used for networking as well. Go ahead and do where you are your best. Thank you very much. Okay, Barbara. Also from my side, a very big thank. So what is a conference without participants and without speakers? So the first thank is to you. More than 300 people have joined us and more than 90 speakers have been here. That was an experiment and we have been very riskful in this. But at the end, I'm, I'm lucky about this as far as a, a round thing. It, is not a, it has been not been a thing what has exactly results. That was not our aim. So we only wanted to show what, what exists, and we only wanted to start the discussion. It is a beginning, not a finish. So that was the idea, and, and in this case, I'm, I'm glad. So, so it's, it's a fine thing. But that, for me, it's very important to thank also all that people who took with us this long road, that 18 months, and that was not an easy thing, I can tell you. <laughs> it was, and now uh, there should be uh, going on some, some slides, how it works, who can help me. It's already there. Already there, but it shouldn't be there. <laughs> Don't, never ask me. So, at the end, you can help me? Can you plug the button? Ah, okay. Really. So, there is the team of the organization offices, uh, office, what makes everything so easy for us all together here. And therefore, there is my first thank. The work of them is very, it, it was fantastic to work with these people together to organize a conference. And this is a <laughs> special applause. applause. The next. Oh. Uh, the team of the public relations, you get the brochure and all this, it works fantastic. It was so easy to work with him and uh, to do this work, it's just very, very glad, very fine to work with him. Many thanks to the team of the public relations. <laughs> and now, we have had a team, we met seven times here in Berlin to prepare around the 18 months and there are special people who joined these meetings. This is Najla Abed and Renata Papsch who had uh, prepared a, a se one session. It's Stefan Winkler from the Annalind Network in Germany. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's you heard them all, her all, it's Christine Merkel from the UNESCO. Without her, we couldn't have had this conference. She was one of the idea givers. It's Rainer W. Ernst from the Mutesius Kunsthochschule, the president. He was the one who made the application for the European Union, and it was also a bit riskful, riskful for him to do it with us. So, and there's Susanne Bosch, together with her students, Alice Burns, Chiara O'Malley, Julie Miller. And don't forget to go to your envelope and look if there's a message for you. There are some messages, and you shouldn't let them hear. And there is, you heard him just now, Markus Graf from 5533 Istanbul. Many thanks, Markus. And yesterday, the one who made this evening, Jürgen Bock, Mamaus, Lisbon. Many thanks to Jürgen. And partner in our European Union project is Tina Scherbel from the International Academy of Fine Arts in Ramallah. And it goes on. It's Ralf Klaassen from the Kinderkultur Karawane. And Martin Bach from the Allianz Kultur Stiftung. Many thanks to Mark. Ute Jacho and Randa Courier from the GIZ. <laughs> Anzio Wetzel and Imke Grimmer from the Goethe Institute. <laughs> Elke aus dem Moro, it's, it's a true name, <laughs> aus dem Moro from IFA. 
Elfriede Müller und Martin Schönfeld von BBK Berlin. And Sasha Keegan Kegon, excuse me. Kelly the wrong written. Sasha Kegon from uh, Kultura 21, not 22. So, now the people from the backside, they should come here and where are the flowers? Where are the flowers? You should see them. The responsible manager of this organization and many people ask me, oh, it's, so, it's working so good, are there no, no problems? It's a hard work, a very hard work to organize a conference without problems. And the overall responsible one is Eva Klarkel, the management of the conference. Eva. Give eine or Yes. Thank you so much. And the ones with the techniques, it's Stefan, Hergenröter, and Falk Noerks. Please come here. Get out of here. So, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> okay, and... I hope that we will read some and hear some in the press. And responsible for, for, uh, for this is Caroline Richter. Please, Caroline, come here. She's not there? She will come later. It was very fine to work with her. Okay. <laughs> we have had around 30 press journalists here. And we will, I think we will read some of this conference afterwards. And in the team, Janika Milan for the organization. Janika. Yeah. Okay. I combine it with Jenny Schlosser and Friederike Pocatis. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but at the end, there are four most important people. And at the beginning, I had a phone call to Daniel. I tried him six times to, to reach him. And then afterwards, he knew, he knew <laughs> why he, I wanted to reach him. He was the one who brought up that network, that international network, with all that addresses, all that context in the first. And without Daniel, this conference couldn't be happened. Thank you so much, Daniel. And wait a second. So when we started the first U project in Radius of Art, Yet our first employee, it was Katrin. And Katrin, all the time since 2007, 2008, was constantly working for this project, constantly working for this conference. And so my, a very, very big thank goes to Katrin. Where is she? Ah. <laughs> so, that's my fault. So, and it was not so easy to implement the idea of this conference here in the center of Sahanich Belfond. What do they want from us? And we needed a key person. And without that key, sp key person, it couldn't work. So, but we found one. It's Heike Leschmann, and she does fantastic work with Heike. great thank you from my side as well to Heike because she took over <laughs> in a time where she is so busy with many, many other things. I'm really very grateful. So, and for me personally, something very special, it's, where's Anke? Anke Wiffelmann, the head of the project, Peace of Art, a Peace of Art, Radius of Art, and of the conference at all. <laughs> So,
So this is a finish. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> so this is a point uh, to finish the conference. But the last finish will be the symphony of the moment. It was not possible to have the ninth symphony here. But we, but we are happy that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, because then not maybe not everybody could have participated. You okay. know, it's quite difficult with his instruments. Okay. But he may, he's a facilitator for everybody. So don't jump out of the building without having connected with Johannes Heimrath. I really I don't advise you, I invite you. <laughs> it well. just happens now. You ha- can have a heavy glass of wine by the side. Is that right? Yes, it yeah, is okay. absolutely so right. What can be better so. at, in, at the end of the conference? Okay. <laughs> There's two things to say. One is If you have something rest to say as about the results and what is missing, take this sheet you got, and if not, on the exit you will find one. And have a nice evening together with us with wine and that symphony of the moment. Thank you all.